Gordy Evans, and today I'll be going through Ottawa's first VR program at a high school, Osgood Township High School to be precise. Me and my two colleagues, Seb Ismail and Nick Villeneuve, will be presenting these projects from various students at Osgood Township High School, along with Mr. Dubow, our ComTech teacher. Hi, I'm Seb Ismail, and I'm a producer, cameraman, and editor on this documentary. Hey, I'm Nicholas Villeneuve, and I'm the director of this documentary, and I'm also working on the story. Who are you and what's your role in this project? I'm Tristan Brown and I'm the lead programmer for our VR project in Mr. DuBose's uh, content class. My name is Jameson Dean and I'm lead coordinator and secondary programmer for the VR project that we're working on in Mr. DuBose's content class. Is this your first time programming with VR? Uh, yeah, this is the first time I've ever really worked with VR, but I've made a couple other games in the class and I'm pretty confident about it. This is my first time programming a VR video game. I've never done it before. I've tested them out and played them before, but this is my first time ever trying to do something. And how did you go about the learning the VR program aspects without any previous experience? Uh, for me, learning stuff like this is a just a jump into the deep end sort of experience. Wing it, just yeah. learn as you go. Um, I've been looking at resources that Mr. Dubow has in the ComTech room, like the VR cookbook. Uh, that's been pretty helpful in learning different types of movement and stuff like that. But overall, I've been watching a lot of YouTube tutorials and things like that from other creators that have made the games themselves. How did this experience stand out from any of your other content projects so far? This experience is definitely one of the more nerve-wracking ones because we are inexperienced when it comes to VR, so working with this sort of stuff is new and fresh, so it's, it's fun, but it's, it's nerve-wracking. Yeah, definitely. This is, uh, this is something that I've never really worked on before, so it's something totally different. We're, we're like on the, the front edge of what yeah, yeah. people are doing, so it seems really new. And, and so who are you? I'm Mr. DeVoe. I teach at Osgoode Township High School. I teach ComTech. I've been doing that for about six years. I've also taught at the University of Ottawa five years, uh, the course for preparing teachers to use technology in the classroom. And I've also presented on technology uh, across the country several times uh, over the last 10 years. Okay, and what were your goals with this project? Uh, my goal of this project was to find a, a project that would give students the opportunity to help others with technology. Our goal is to create a uh, VR simulation that would help students who are struggling uh, to uh, maybe improve in the real world by using the tool that we're going to create. So one example that we're working on right now or prototyping, some of the groups are working on this, is how to create a car, for example, that you're driving around in and the car is going to be used to help these students who uh, apparently most don't pass the, uh, the Ontario driver's test. So there are um, five classes at uh, Woodruff High School that are uh, a group of students who generally don't get the same high school degree as most of us or most uh, regular students because they struggle for a lot of different reasons and so uh, one of the areas that a lot of them struggle in is uh, getting their driver's test so that's an example of something we may try to do okay. now we don't know how to do that we're, we're kind yeah. of hoping to uh, move along in that direction where uh, we figure out a whole bunch of neat things okay cool and uh, what experience do you have with VR before this project uh, pretty much none uh, but I have a lot of experience working with uh, 3D modeling with my students and um, in case you don't know VR is built in a 3D environment so er everything you experience when you put on the VR goggles if you've ever tried it is pretty much been designed in a 3D software called Maya or Blender or something similar at my school we teach uh, Maya which is the industry standard a few years back I uh, took the plunge and learned uh, everything I needed to teach it to my students. I had to teach myself, which is really often how it works in this field because, you know, five years ago, this the technology barely was around. So you're constantly learning new things and it's the way it works. And um, so the VR is just basically, you're immersed in the environment. And the other thing, the other big piece of the puzzle that I taught the students is uh, a game engine called Unreal Engine, which is an excellent tool that's used in industry um, and it's free which is another big consideration because there's never any money in high school uh, for for technology and in fact if these programs were not free 
we probably couldn't teach them to our students. And the fact that they're free just allows the students to learn how to use a real tool that they would use in the real world so that they can make informed decisions on what they would like to do in the future. So, you know, they want to be a 3D designer, awesome. Then they tried it out, maybe they liked it, hopefully they liked it, and at least they know if they go into it what it'll look like. They can make the big bucks doing that kind of thing. And there you go. So how did you get the funding to become one of the first schools in Ottawa to be able to use VR? Um, it was kind of by chance. Really, we wanted to do VR gaming, and so what happened is uh, the school board created an opportunity for experiential learning, and so I asked for uh, you know about a thousand dollars for uh, the VR glasses because that's what they cost. The real ones. We're not talking about the Google cardboard ones, and. Uh, and those are the ones that work the best with the tool that we use, which is called Unreal Engine. And so the students are able to design and immediately see uh, what they're creating using this tool. So um, the, the lead at the board, Cameron, um, told me, if you are interested in participating, we have a group at Woodruff that's also hoping to use VR. And one thing led to another, and we said, well, maybe we can try and create a VR game for this group and hopefully that this tool that we create will have some application. I think for my students, what I'm more interested in is, you know, the, the bringing them from point A to point B. And one thing I know for sure about technology is, unless I was some kind of expert, and the problem is with these tools are always so new, nobody knows how to really use them really well yet. Point A to point B will be a very kind of crooked line, and we're gonna hopefully get to point B where we have a really cool project product that's going to be uh, maybe does what we hope it does and you know this would obviously have a lot of commercial applications and uh, that's what we're, we're hoping for so so the school board made some money available for what I would say are maybe some of us more entrepreneurial type teachers like myself and thanks to that it was an opportunity for us to uh, you know, really challenge our students in a probably, I'd say, a very meaningful way. And that's what we're hoping to do. How long do you think this will take and what is your process? Uh, well, our, our immediately short timeline is we just got the VR equipment and we have one left a week of school. So, you know, one of, I'm just going to say it was, it was a long process to get access to the technology because there's a lot of uh, steps uh, built into the, the, the purchasing process. But now that we have them, uh, the students have been coming in at lunch, the injured spares, staying after school, uh, late after school, a few have stayed to learn how to basically use the tool. So the first part is learning how to use the tool. It's kind of like learning how to swing a hammer. Now, once you know how to swing the hammer, the next step is, okay, well, how do I build a house with it? And that's the more challenging step. And our first goal is maybe how to frame one wall. In other words, how to build a very small thing. And by the end of, uh, I'll say, well, I guess June, we're hoping to have a few little pieces that were built by different people here and there. And I have several student groups working on different challenges. One group's trying to build like a, uh, how do you put a uh, golf club in the actor's hand, meaning the, the player, so that it hits a ball. And so we had a program. So we've already designed the golf course and the golf club and now they're learning how to hit the ball so that, and how does it travel you know, the whole physics in the, in the engine. I have several groups that are learning to build uh, environments, which uh, a lot of that is learning how to do architecture virtually and then bringing that in. And then how do we make it look uh, more realistic and less kind of cartoony? And I'll, we're actually debating if we leave it cartoony because doing, uh, making it look real, uh, like a real room is actually quite hard and we probably don't have the expertise. Um, and that's what we're trying to do in the short term. Next year, what we are doing is we're running through our media production class, which is often also the yearbook, all year long through the lunch hour. And I've already uh, tapped on the several students to join us, and they volunteer and they're very excited. And it's, uh, so that's going to be their challenge. It's going to be a very independent learning, where a lot of them have already started with me this year. Uh, either in, in VR or in 3D modeling or in game design and they're going to try to work together uh, with my leadership I guess to uh, try to come up with something uh, throughout next year and we're hoping that by I'll say maybe March 
maybe April, we have a really good uh, working prototype, something that's, uh, you know, we could show off. And, and that's very optimistic because reality is uh, we're all learning this tool and uh, we're also trying to get industry partners. I've already approached uh, RBC and they're going to provide us with more funding because one of the problems uh, with these kind of projects unfortunately is very expensive and unfortunately school budgets are not what they used to be and of course when it's something experimental nobody wants to take a chance. And so uh, RBC, I've talked with our senior managers uh, for a project they have that's called RBC Launch and they're willing to probably fund us a couple thousand dollars but that's not been confirmed but at least they're interested and that, that's the kind of thing we have to do. Uh, the other piece of the puzzle is I'm trying to approach a few game studios because they, they have some experience. And the third piece of the puzzle which I've already done and gotten verbal uh, confirmation that this will probably happen is I've approached a, one of the leading schools in the country, Vancouver Film School. And they actually have one of the first full VR training programs created in Canada. And it just launched uh, in uh, June, I believe. And so we're going to pair up with some of their students and their instructors for both mentorship and sort of coaching. Uh, so they're going to coach us along. And I already know this is going to, they're going to be learning with us. Because that's often the way it is with these new technologies. It's not just uh, somebody, some people are experts, I'm sure, out there. Uh, but uh, a lot of the students that will be in the uh, program will be learning and uh, hopefully allowing us to take it to that next step. So that's our timeline. It's a lot of like ifs and, and, and you know, some dead ends probably, but, uh, I'm, you know, we're going to be moving in the general direction of trying to come up with something that's going to be playable and cool for the students at Woodruff. That's what we're aiming for. Let's see if I get a good image to All right, so I'm here with Fraser, and uh, Fraser's working on something for us. Fraser, what are you working on? I'm currently trying to fix the collisions on an object uh, right here. Uh, so could case. you tell uh, people who don't know anything about game design, what exactly is a collision? What does that mean? Well, a collision is, like, if you didn't have collisions, then the character that you play as would just be able to walk and move through anything. Yeah. So say if there is a wall or a couch or some object that you want your character to be able to interact with and sit on or just be able to touch it, then you have to add collisions to it. Yeah, and, and then... Some collisions, you have to actually uh, get, like, sometimes you have to get specific collisions because not everything is either a cube or a circle or something. Yep. So sometimes collisions get a little complex because you have to map around an object and let the player know that there's something there <coughs> that they can, like, touch or hit. Okay, cool. And which, what are you trying to, you're trying to put a collision on this cube? Uh, this cube, which is uh, kind of a room that I imported into uh, Unreal. Is it Joey's room? or? I know it's a room that I got off the internet. Um, okay. I might uh, work with Joey's room. Probably well, one, once you figured it out, right? Yeah. Uh, but I'm probably, I'm going to have to do this on uh, Connor's arena that he made. Yeah, which we can't get to run because it's too big. Yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, anyways, we're going to try to solve that in a minute, but... Yeah. Okay, well that's awesome. Thank you very much. That's excellent. First. So I'm here with Peter, who's one of the students working on uh, in Unreal Engine, and he's really been developing some uh, programming and some material uh, materials that would go into the project. So I'm going to have him talk a little bit about what he's done. So go ahead, Peter. What have you been working on? All right, so I took a last wall we're going on to see the fog. So you can see I got these big boxes here that shows where it's going to be applied. Yeah. So if I go lower myself down into it, then you can see that it's going to start getting really foggy like that. Why don't we press play so that we can see a little bit what it looks like. So here I got so here, so you, really heavy fog on the land. Yeah, and you coated that in there. Yeah, go out on in the water, it's lighter. So what I did, I coated that. I got it right over here. So I made it all like up in. Uh, so as you can material. see, they're using branching to do the coding, uh, which is another form of visual scripting. Um, here we go for the fog. You got that over here. So. Cool. So uh, how about you can show me the materials because you you learned how to paint your level, if you want to call it that, and I thought that was really cool. Yeah. And you went and figured some of this out on yourself. You yeah, created this, this level. Can paint. So right now, I've got a couple materials. So for instance, I want to paint a gravel path over here. Yeah. Then I could just go and drag that over along there. It makes a nice path that your player can run around. That's amazing. Play that 
So there you go. We got a little bit of a yeah. path here right now. That looks great. All right, Pete, I'm going to cut you off because I think we have enough here, but that's a, an excellent uh, project you're working on. It's going to be very useful for us. Thank you very much. All right, so I'm here with jo Joey Vilnev, who's also uh, one of the students who's going to be helping us out next year, and he's been uh, learning using uh, Udemy uh, some of the advanced techniques that we may possibly need for our VR project. So, Joey, how about you show us a little bit what you're doing here? <laughs> that's that's about what happens with these computers so um, we'll get them to load it back up but if you can I'm gonna zoom in here and you can see this level here looks like a real room and Joey's been working for a week on this and as you can see you got the real wooden textures the real artifacts the, it looks like a real sofa yeah, uh, so I've just been taking the, uh, the default models and stuff that come with the nearby Dodge bridge package yeah, and that's the step that we're hoping to do, and uh, the amount of detail that goes in this is is time consuming, but uh, you know, uh, essential to making a really cool looking game and uh, bringing that into something else. All right, thanks, Joey. That's what I'm trying to do here with Jameson and uh, Tristan, who are. Uh, so this is a model that you see on screen that one of our students designed in another software package and it's a whole level, it's just incredible and we were able to make it work easily in 2D gaming. But as you can probably see, um, we tried to bring it into VR and we're really disappointed because the level is incredible. And so what's happened, Jameson? Uh, well, right now it's just all the assets, It's I think it's just, I don't know exactly what it's trying to figure out, but it's... It's crashed. I don't know what's going it on keeps at all. crashing. It's, there's way too many assets. Yeah, it can't handle how many assets there are to bring in. So if you're looking there, there's almost two and a half thousand assets yeah. all being brought in at once. Yeah, and it could, and basically, even though we have the most powerful computer, almost we're gonna have to learn to work if you differently. Look at our uh, memory there. Yeah. We're using up 76% of our memory. And that's a computer with 32 gigs of RAM when most school board computers only have four. Like here, let me see. And, that and it has a very high processor. Here's what our PC looks like sat wise, and it's still not able to handle. Okay, well, we're learning how to work with the tools we have. But, yeah, uh, you know, that's that's excellent, guys. Keep, uh, well, we'll, we'll, we'll try and we're going to try something after. Right. Hi, Caroline. How's it going? I'm good. How are you? All right, pretty good. So Caroline has been working on developing a uh, uh, some tricks that we didn't really know how to do using particles. And particles are basically, as you can see, a fireball. So maybe you can walk us through your game and show us what you've kind of tried to do so far. Yeah, sure. I'm trying to add sound to the fire right now. Okay. I can come and help you with that after. That's one I know. <laughs> so, so I can hear it right now, but I don't want it to be like as loud as I walk up to it. Yeah. So what happens when you go in the fire? Uh, the damage like goes down or like. Yep. Assumes. You program damage in it. That's excellent. Yep. And then I also program that when it gets to zero, that it just kind of stops. Okay. So. And you could go to a game over screen. Maybe we could figure that out. So what happens when? Uh, what's the goal of your game? So my the goal of my game is to save a child. Actually, I have to go back to it. But, um, yep. There's a child that's in the burning building, but you have to like find and save. I couldn't figure out how to pick up objects though. Oh, okay, we're working on that. Yeah, I'm still working on that. But you can generally like just kick the baby out of the house for now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's good. Well, that's so I something. Can, I figure out how to move it, but I just can't. Yeah, I have to get the inventory still. Well, then you're gonna move it, and I'm gonna build a, like a room that's kind of like fireproof here. Okay. And then you just have to move the baby there so that it's safe. That's amazing. All right, thank you so much. Appreciate it.